Hey, welcome back to Mr. Market. Thank you so much for joining me. We're now into episode 17. So for this past week, we were up $1,163, which put us up to $25,763, which means that we were able to reach our halfway point for our annual goal of $50,000 a year. And so that puts us at 51% of our target. So this is a big week and we've done it in a little under four months. So yay. All right, so for the week, the market's been continuing its, its uh, nonstop run, and we're continuing to participate, but with all this, uh, I guess you, you can consider euphoria, the, the fear and greed index has gone up to pretty uncomfortable levels. So I like to track the CNN fear and greed indicator. It typically goes from about 20 to 80, and 20 is when the market is really fearful, and 80 is when the market is pretty euphoric and they're getting a little bit more greedy. It's currently at 68, which is a little bit of a cause for concern. It still means that we have more room to go higher. And especially since we have earnings week, typically markets tend to rise during earnings because there's this whole game that Wall Street plays where the expectations are going to be lowered just low enough so the market can hop right over it when they actually report earnings. And everyone just kind of winks and nudges. And then, and then when the companies come out and beat earnings, like, oh, wow, amazing. Our performance is better than expectations. And then we all know that expectations were a lot higher in the past, but then they've actually drifted back down for them to jump over. It's kind of ridiculous. I have a number of charts to show you, so let's get started. Last week, CPI came in lower than expected, which caused the market to rally initially. But once investors got to see that the Federal Reserve thought a recession was going to be more likely later on this year, that rally faded away pretty quickly. But immediately right after, PPI came in and saved the day and came in way lower than expected. And that triggered the market to rally with the expectation that prices are going to keep falling. And there are some more on the way based on some Federal Reserve surveys. PPI is probably going to keep falling further, which creates the narrative that the Federal Reserve will probably stop raising their interest rates soon. But wages are still elevated. So after these inflation readings, the expectations for interest rates going up next month actually went up from 50% all the way up to 80%. And with the weaker inflation readings and the expectation that the Fed will raise rates just one more time, the volatility index is about as low as it's been over the past year. It's now at 17, and I hate it. I hate it because it means the market is very complacent, and it'll only take a small bit of bad news for markets to weaken significantly. What kind of bad news? Oh, you know, like a recession. You know, these are the numbers for the continuing claims and it's reached the point that we have never been able to avoid a recession. And there's this other issue with the debt ceiling where the government is going to possibly run out of money and not be able to go pay their debts. And that's expected to happen sometime in the window of June to September. And if you look at the market's assessment of the risk of default this time around, it's higher than it has ever been. The closest we ever got to having default was in 2011 and levels right now are even higher than that. I'll talk about this debt ceiling issue a little bit further in another episode. For my positions this week, I have puts that I sold for the S&P 500 ETF at the $400 strike price and at the $395 strike price. And I'm still continuing to play a very, very small amount in the banking ETF KRE with a $40 strike price. The KRE ETF is probably my highest risk position because that trend is still pretty negative as we've seen with JP Morgan's results because expectations were so low coming into earnings that even if companies just meet them or even slightly exceed them, the market can really move them up. So, you know, I, I think the market's bracing for the worst, but if they get something that they expect, the market could bring these stocks back up higher. So that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next week.